All right, family, we live. Jump in uh, my chat section. Let me know when you're able to hear and see me, family. Jump in the um, chat section. Let me know when you're able to hear and see me, and we're going to start it off. As soon as everybody notifies me that y'all can hear me and see me, I'm jumping right into it. I'm jumping right into it. Okay, perfect. So, let me pull up my uh, little blueprint in front of me. Okay. So, family, today we come here in this live stream, as always, uh, with the facts to crack your back. And so, we're here again, you know, on another episode of, you know, Nation of Islam and the fuckery that they like to conduct. OK, so, you know, to anybody who because I know that this uh, interview that I'm going to do is going to bring a lot of viewers to this channel. Anybody who's normally on this channel, y'all pretty much know my stance on the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad, the Church of Scientology, etc. But today, OK, I've been uh, fortunate enough to be able to connect with a very, very, very high minded individual. For us to dig deeper into the details of this situation in regards to, you know, the partnership or, you know, the interactions between the Nation of Islam as well as the Church of Scientology. So as I get ready to uh, introduce my guest and um, allow him to, you know, give a little bit of his background in regards to his blog and, you know, his, his stance and his position on this entire situation, I just want to give everybody an overview just in case you knew when this is your first time watching this. From my point of view... OK, me personally, uh, in regards to the research that I've done in this matter, I have researched uh, the Church of Scientology as well as the Nation of Islam for their corrupt background and what I believe to be criminal behavior since, you know, the existence of these two organizations. And it's even more unfortunate that they both teamed up to interact with each other. Now, with that being said, I have specifically zoned in on a lot of members of the Nation of Islam, one of them recently being Riza Islam. Uh, I did two exposed videos on Riza Islam, which I'll pin the uh, link to those videos as well as the link to my guest blog in the comments. Um, those two videos, all you got to do is type in Young Pharaoh Riza Islam Exposed Part 1 and Part 2, um, and they'll come right up. So in those videos, I've, I've you know, to the best of my independent research, and my guests will expound farther because, uh, as you all know, Riza Islam was recently arrested and my guest was actually in the courtroom. So so we, we come in with receipts, as we always do. But, you know, to the best of my individual research, I've detailed the reason for his arrest. I've detailed, you know, how his parents uh, and him as well, you know, were linked and interacting with Scientology before he ever, you know, tried to jump on the Nation of Islam bandwagon to escape um you know, the heat that he got for running that little insurance fraud uh, organization and scheme that he was running in L.A. And I've detailed a lot more. I did two whole videos uh, right now. I'm not going to run down those videos. If you've been watching, then you know. If not, please go catch up. But without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce my guest, Jeffrey Augustine. I mean, excuse me, Jeffrey Augustine onto my platform. Uh, you know, everybody show him some love. Y'all know how we do on my platform. Um, you know, keep my comments the way I like them. Good, good vibes, good frequency. You know, don't say nothing crazy. YouTube is, is cracking down on a lot of stuff. But um, I want to say this before I introduce my guest. I'm actually uh, extremely, extremely pleased and happy, you know, that I was able to even connect with Jeffrey Augustine because this is, this is what I, me personally, this is my vision. My vision is that the best of the best and, and, and those, you know, from their individual communities strive to be the best they can be. And when you see error, you know, in in areas that may be in or outside your community, you if you can't correct them errors, you at least speak on them to the point where somebody who can correct them speak on them. And so I'm this is a blessing, you know, that another perspective from a community that, you know, most of my subscribers or most of the people that rock with me, we're not from, you know, I'm representing the best that I can as a black man from the black community. So for me, looking at the Nation of Islam and, you know, the way that they're trying to finesse us in the Church of Scientology from my perspective and then being able to link 
and, and can join with somebody else who sees it from their perspective, this not only can bridge a gap, but this can show people exactly the wave that I'm on, which is, as y'all know, the pro-righteous wave. It's bullshit out here. And everybody's tired of bullshit. And this right here is a beautiful thing because it lets everybody know that everybody's not with the bullshit. And so I just want to put that out there because this is important. And I'm going to say why this is important right now. This is important because if you let somebody like Louis Farrakhan or the Nation of Islam, Ben X, Rizza Islam, or any of these goofy assholes out here blind you and, and create your enemy for you, then you would never be able to see the shit they're doing. If I was somebody that was just so blinded by overly loving my people, I would never check to see if they're making mistakes. So this right here is about making our existence healthy for future evolution. So here's this here's the uh scenario I'm giving you. You got people like Riza Islam, the nation of Islam that will sit here and tell you all day the white man is the devil, wapti wapti wap. They're not gonna tell you that they're financially benefiting from interacting with that same entity, which you're about to hear in this interview. They're not gonna tell you that they're dealing with the Church of Scientology. They're not gonna tell you that they scamming and scheming. So they will sit here and tell the black community all day the white man is the devil and really they shaking hands with the same person that they claiming is the devil behind the scenes. But then you got somebody like me who I'm I'm I just want the best for what's best. And then it wouldn't be expected for me to interact with or 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 you know converse with somebody like Jeffrey Augustine from my community because everybody carrying the, the the preconceived notion that Farrakhan then preset and that the Nation of Islam then preset which really is the same thing the elites do. If the elites keep everybody fighting, then you can't focus on what the fuck they doing. You can't focus on how you being victimized from the you know from the top part of the pyramid or the or the upper echelons of society because you too busy fighting with people that's at the bottom like you. So we definitely have tension. We definitely have horrible history between certain communities. That is beyond a reasonable. I mean, that is you know that's a fact. Way beyond a reasonable doubt. But in this particular situation, when it comes to the Church of Scientology. And the nation of Islam, we can come to this head and come to this agreement that this is an issue, this is a problem, and this shit needs to be shut down. Ain't no stop, ain't no talk about it. This shit has to has to end. And so, without further ado, uh, family, I want to introduce my guest, uh, Jeffrey Augustine. Jeffrey Augustine, you know, let them know about your blog. This is your introduction. Go ahead and introduce yourself, and we can get right into this uh, interview. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show, Farrell. I uh like your work, it's very factual. And uh, I reached out to you because this does concern the Church of Scientology, I primarily view as a uh, transnational criminal syndicate. Yes, sir. My yeah, my blog is called the Scientology Money Project. Uh, your listeners can find it at scientologymoneyproject.com. And my goal has been to use nothing but facts, court documents, IRS documents, you know, to be Scientology documents to show, to offer proof, you know, uh, to people of what the church is doing. Yes, sir. And I have been following um, Riza Islam, Nation of Islam, Church of Scientology for a very long time. So I, uh, where I reached out to you, you know, Riza Islam and uh, his... Um, Mother Hanan, his sister Zimat, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Nimat and Zakaya, and uh, uh, someone who was working with them, Bale and Beverly Washington, were were charged in this uh, 3.8 million dollar Medi-Cal scam out here in California. Correct. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today: how it began, what are the origins? Yes, sir. And um, before we even get into that, I want to also, uh, you know, give people a background. Uh, you have, and you can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have actually appeared on uh, Leia Ramini's, if I'm saying it correctly, uh, Leia Ramini's Emmy Award winning show, uh, Scientology in the Aftermath, correct? Yes, I, I, I uh, appeared on Leia Ramini's show, Scientology in the Aftermath, uh, all three seasons, and uh, that that show was so important because it laid bare how... Scientology uh, harms people. It, it doesn't matter what color you are, what group you belong to, what race you are. It harms anyone it comes into contact with. It destroys people. 
That's and right. the damage it does to people financially, emotionally, psychologically, the way it breaks up families. That's right. It's a it's a it's a very wicked, evil, malicious system. It it's uh, a killing system. It rapes people. At, you know, at the level of the spirit. And Leah Show won an Emmy because she so bravely spoke out. And, and the church fought every step of the way. They engaged in their trademark fair game, character assassination, hate websites, mirrors, attacks. Because, you know, the dark does not like to be brought to the light. That's right. So, uh, That's right. But because of her, because of the quality of her work and that of her, 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 her co-host, Mike Rinder, who was at one time the number three man in the Church of Scientology International. Uh, that's why I won an Emmy because of the outstanding quality of the work of telling the truth. Right. That's right. Um, last, uh, last bit of piece on your background so that, you know, people who may not be familiar with you can understand, you know, how certified you are in this area. You have been dedicated to, you know, the exposure of the Church of Scientology for 15 years, correct? Yes. I started speaking out publicly in 2005 and by way of background, my wife is Karen Della Carriere. Now, she she actually served in uh, aboard L. Ron Hubbard's flagship Apollo, mm -hmm. and she was trained by L. Ron Hubbard personally. She became the highest rank you could attain in as an auditor in the Church of Scientology, which is a Class 12 K supervisor. That would be like being a cardinal in the Catholic Church. Okay. So as a technical person, that is someone who delivers auditing. Right. Elrond Hubbard only made seven Class 12s, and Karen was one of them. And then she became a Class 12 case supervisor. That's someone who manages other Class 12s. Mm -hmm. So during the 1980s, for example, she, the church charged $1,000 an hour for her. So if you wanted to go to get auditing from a Class 12, it was $1,000 an hour. Right. Now, she was married to the church president, Heber Jench. Mm-hmm. For so many years, and they had a son named Alexander Jench, and um, he died in 2012. Alexander Jench, spelling of the last names J E N T Z S C H. Alexander Jench died in 2012 because his Scientology in-laws let him lay and die as a fever. They didn't take him to the emergency room or urgent care for antibiotics. He died of pneumonia. This became an international news story. But Pharaoh, what was so craven about it? And this will touch anybody. Yeah. Alexander had been forced to disconnect from his mother, Karen, in 2010, because she left the church and publicly spoke out. She had divorced Heber back in 1990. And when Karen left and bravely spoke out about it, the abuses of the church, her son couldn't see her because Scientology breaks up families through its policy of disconnection. That's right. So, you know, I was with Karen. We have money. We could have got Alexander the best medical care possible. And I mean, and it wasn't a lot. He just had pneumonia. And young people, you you bounce back from pneumonia with antibiotics. Right. So Alexander died. We didn't even know about it. They didn't have the decency to call a mother and say, your son has just died at age 27. We found out about it two days later through the kindness of a stranger online who has since come out. That's, and... Um, so we, you know, Karen's grieving. Her son has just died. We, she wants to go kiss her dead son goodbye. The Church of Scientology will not allow her to do that. They told Alexander's wife, "You better not, you better not let Karen kiss her dead son goodbye." Wow! And that is so malicious. I mean, this is how evil they are. You can't kiss your dead son goodbye, even in war. Even in war, when someone's killed, you, you, you return the body to the other side. You, you return, you know, the dog tags. Right. But this is that. So that's when you see that kind of um, evil up close and personal. And and then they built hate websites on my wife. So we've had to see Scientology's evil up front, close and personal. That's right. And um, so that's one of the one of my motivations for fighting. This is a. This is an antichrist cult. It's malicious. That's right. And I think all of us, all good people, need to speak out and expose evil, and that's that's what we're doing. That's right. And um, 
You know, I just want to let everybody know, you know, if y'all don't know by now, you know, me personally, like I said, if you're new to this, I'm, I'm pretty familiar, you know, and I want to say some of my subscribers, you know, should be pretty familiar with a lot of the details that he named involving the Church of Scientology because I did a whole lecture on it specifically uh, exposing the Church of Scientology. I think it was like a hundred slide PowerPoint. And, um, you know, speaking of that, you know, no, no nothing confirmed yet, y'all, but I definitely, definitely will be speaking with uh, Jeffrey in regards to seeing if we could put something together to further expose and, and bring, uh, you know, the corruption of the Church of Scientology, as well as the Nation of Islam and their little partnership, you know, to the public eye. So, you know, if that's a possibility, y'all, I will be updating y'all on that. But I just want to let people know, especially wicked people. Uh, you know, everybody not afraid of y'all. And some of us, you know, actually want that smoke. So, you know, um, th this is these are the times where it's do or die as far as the evolution of consciousness on this planet. So we're going to keep watching Bush. You got people running around uh, doing things such as he just stated, you know, allowing your son to pass away. And, you know, in a malicious manner, in a, in a neglectful manner, any other situation, your ass would have went to jail for neglect you know, uh, 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 criminally. So you got people, you know, criminally neglecting uh, your family members, not allowing you to speak to your family, and then, uh, you know, not allowing you to kiss your family goodbye. That's a heartless entity. So if, if, if it's not an if, because we didn't, we we know this to be facts, but now it's a time, we have the uh, time and point in existence for action. But bringing on my first question, uh, how did the criminal case Again, matter of fact, before I ask you this, let me give everybody the blueprint. I did, I exposed Rizzo Islam, y'all, and I broke down how, you know, him and his mother and uh, I believe it to be his stepfather was running, you know, an insurance fraud scam for the Church of Scientology in Los Angeles. And they also scammed the residents of Los Angeles out of uh, home vouchers. And so um, he was actually arrested you know when he went to his court which he was prolonging i don't know if y'all remember i put up the case i showed the upcoming court dates all of that so by him being arrested this proves everything that i said to be as fact and he he purposely didn't respond to me when i brought this out because he didn't want everybody to know you know his affiliations and, and his little secret you know situation he had going on and the reason i say that is because uh jeffrey was in the courtroom while he was arrested so i want to let everybody know that this is not we ain't on here doing no spec. I don't do speculation. Y'all know how I do. I don't. I'm not a conspiracy theory. We come in with receipts. Period. It might be an unorthodox truth, but it's the truth that we can prove. So this is someone right here who not only has over 15 years of actual research and actual uh, grind that they put into battling the Church of Scientology. This man was in the courtroom when Riza Islam got arrested. So we finna get the 411. But he said something to me before I asked this question, which was actually very important and it might seem small but it's big to me he let me know that no members of the nation of islam were present in the courtroom during this time and so we have to ask you know how much unity and support is actually within this little faction that they love to try to you know uh flash around the internet internet which is non-existent but you know jumping into uh the first question here it comes. How did the criminal case against Riza Islam and his co-defendants begin, and what are its roots? Well, Farrell, those are those are the great questions to begin with. Before I answer them, just let me quickly answer one of the uh, questions in the in the comments. Uh, when Alexander Trench died, Karen's son died. He was married, and so Alexander's widow had custody of the body. Karen did not. And that's how it works in the state of California. That's why his widow could tell uh, her mother-in-law, no, you can't see the body. I'd also called the uh, mortuary and begged the owner of the mortuary to let Karen see the body as a humane gesture. And nobody would know, but the church had called and threatened to uh, sue him if he, if he, you know, violated the law and it was right. you know could have been a secret I mean, so that to just answer question and comments um where this all began is with uh alfredi johnson 
you know, he claims to be a Baptist minister, but he's a Scientologist. I've never been able to find any evidence of his ordination from any church body, so I, I presume he's self-ordained. I, I could be uh, incorrect on that. I'm willing to be correct, but I've never seen where his ordination comes from. So in 1992, Alfredi Johnson began the World Literacy Crusade in Compton, California. This was a Scientology center that offered L. Ron Hubbard's so-called study tech mm -hmm. and also drug treatment program, which you would call Narconon. And, and Alfredi Johnson was the man, is the man who brought Isaac Hayes into the Church of Scientology. And what's interesting, when, I, when Isaac Hayes got into the church, he told the church leader, David Miscavige, there's not enough black people in Scientology. And so they started to think about how they could bring more black people into Scientology. And Alfredi Johnson um, was, was working in the, in the community, mm -hmm. and he met up with Tony Muhammad, who was the Western Regional Manager of Nation of Islam out here in L.A., and they got to know each other, right? And as, as they tell the story online, there's a, a YouTube video where they talk about uh, Tony Muhammad was beaten by the LAPD during a candlelight vigil for a young black man who had been killed by the LAPD. Mm -hmm. And he, he got quite a beating, apparently, and he decided, you know, he was just going to drop out of activism. But Alfredi said, hey, let me get you some Scientology auditing. And... Uh, Tony Muhammad said, yeah, that, that, that really, that really worked. I liked it. And, and when he went back to see, uh, Louis Farrakhan, Farrakhan, you know, said, whatever you've got going on, Tony, I want some of it. And that's how Farrakhan, who'd been fighting prostate cancer, got into the church of Scientology, started getting Scientology auditing. And that's sort of been weaving it together. Alfredi had the World Literacy Crusade. Yes. Isaac Hayes support, who, who served as an ambassador for the World Literacy, World Literacy Crusade when he was alive, and then the Nation of Islam gets involved. And just to, and just to uh, punch in right there, for those of you who don't know, the World Literacy Crusade is the operation that I touched on in regards to Riza Islam and his family that, were, that they were utilizing to uh, run their insurance fraud in L.A., which was, uh, you know, co-opted or, let's say, supported for lack of a better word, by the Church of Scientology. But, um, yeah, you can continue. Okay, well, so so the World Literacy Crusade, so the, uh, you know, people saw 2008 to 2010 how uh, Louis Farrakhan insisted that anyone in the Nation of Islam who, who wasn't willing to do Dianetics, and they introduced it as Dianetics. That's how Farrakhan rolled it out as Dianetics, because it didn't seem as offensive as Scientology, right? Right. And that's, that's the use of language. Dianetics seems safe compared to Scientology. So there was this old PR campaign to roll it out. Now, World Literacy Crusade, in, in around this time frame, uh, spun out an organization called the American Health and Education Clinic, AHEC. And this is really where the fraud began. American Health and Education Clinic. It shared the same building and personnel as was testified about in court by the state investigator. So World Literacy Crusade and American Health and Education Clinic were indistinguishable, right? They're the same operation. Uh, American Health was run by Hanan Islam, who is Alfredi's business partner. And... Um, so Hanan was the, the, the president of um, American Health and Education Clinic, and Hanan has 10 kids. Mm -hmm. So she had, she had several of her kids working there, including Riza Islam, Sakaya Islam, and uh, Nimat. Right. And, and what they did, th this whole thing, Hanan recruited, she went into the Compton Unified School District, and she recruited educators, two two principals, some some coaches. She she basically paid them money for access to innocent high school students, right? right? So what they did once these corrupt educators, one principal took sixty thousand dollar payday. Uh, they would 
order students, probably 50 at a time, to go sit in a classroom. And Riza would come in. This was testified in court, and I was there during the preliminary criminal trial. Yes, sir. I was there for all, all four days of it. I was also there for all the events leading up to it where, as you mentioned, uh, the charges were filed in 2015, but Riza and his family tried, they all had separate criminal defense attorneys. They tried to get delay after delay after delay, hoping the charges would go away. But you don't magic charges away, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the law is after you. You can't magically make them go away by delaying. So anyway, uh, Riza would go show a 45 to 55 minute film to a group of high school students who didn't need drug treatment. These kids were not on drugs. They didn't need drug treatment. They were just made to go watch a film by the principal. And then Reza would get the sign-in sheet. So all the students had to sign in. And then uh, what would happen, he would leave. So he spent, you know, total 55 minutes there. He would leave. And then what would happen, as we heard in the preliminary criminal trial from the California Department of Justice investigator, um, the sign-in sheets would go back to American Health and Education Clinics, and there was a suite app where there were ghostwriters. And these ghostwriters would create all these fictional treatment programs for these kids whose names were on the sign-in sheets. So they would bill the 55-minute film at three hours. So they would bill the state for three hours, and then they would show all these bogus progress reports to add more billing. So just for, uh, you know, reason going out and showing a film, uh, he and his mom and his sister would bill the state $6,000 plus additional monies. Wow. So that over, over a period of the scheme from 2010 to 2013, which is four calendar years, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, that's how they billed $3.8 million dollars for doing virtually nothing except showing films and creating fake case histories on students. Well, that's the essence of the crime. And it was right. all Scientology based materials. Right. And in fact, as ha happened at the court, people who worked at world literacy crusade, the employees were forced to take these same courses so they could be billed. You know, they could build their, the state for their employees going through these courses at $15,000 per head. I mean, this is this is as criminal as it gets. That's right. And and what the investigator said at the preliminary criminal trial, these these ghostwriters will testify. The educators have already, you know, pleaded to charges, to you know, and, and done their time. Right. And some of the other defendants. So there's going to be at the criminal trial. We can expect to see. A lot of witnesses saying, yes, I engaged in crime. I did my time. I paid for my, you know, crimes. So the evidence is so overwhelming, but that's how it began. It's a Scientology-based white-collar criminality, financial crimes. Right. And yeah. it all started in, uh, uh, so what happened is uh, when uh, around 2014, the state of California began cracking down on Medi-Cal fraud because there were a lot of these operators going around scamming different communities, mm -hmm. and they began cracking down on it. Well, Hanan Islam raised holy hell. She, when she got defunded, you know, rather than like uh, just stayed away quietly, she raised hell about uh, you know these kids needing treatment. So, and she drew attention to herself, and the investigators had gotten other complaints about uh, American health. And so they, they, the state of California conducted a raid on the Compton offices and they got everything. Right. I mean, they got all the records. They did not see it coming. The, def <laughs> the defendants did not see it coming. They were raided and they seized the records. So um, October, 2015, Riza Islam was criminally charged in a formal charging document along with his mother, Hanan Islam, Zakaya Islam, Mimad Islam, and, and Bayon Beverly Washington. Those are the principal defendants. Uh -huh. uh, Hanan was charged with four counts. Uh, these were all felony charges, and I'll read you from the charging document, which I have posted at the Scientology Money Project. My latest post is called 
people of the state of California versus Rizm, Rizm, Rizm et al. Yep. Um, okay, Hanan, Zakaya, and Bayon, Beverly, Washington, are charged with grand theft, presenting false Medi-Cal claims, insurance fraud. Hanan's charged with an additional count of uh, failure to file tax returns. She somehow forgot to file taxes on that uh, two point eight million. Right, which is which is I don't know how you forget. That's a big mistake. Right, I don't know how you forget <laughs> to file money on that. I mean, file taxes on that. Yeah, I, that's a good. That, I mean, she'll have to explain that <clears throat> if she takes the stand. Uh, Riza was charged with presenting false medical claims and insurance fraud. Okay. Now, now what happened? And, and this is where it gets so strange, Farrell. During the preliminary criminal trial, the uh, they were in, in a courtroom with a judge named Judge Tynan. Yes, and, and this is uh, and this is they were delaying. This is this is in the past, or this is his recent court date that you're about to explain. Well, this is in the past, okay, before the preliminary criminal trial. Yep. They were delaying and delaying, not wanting to go to preliminary criminal trial. Now, at the time, Reza was being represented by a Scientology lawyer named Gary Brown. Okay. And uh, they were fixing to go to, to preliminary criminal trial, and then Gary Brown died. He had a heart. He had heart problems, and he died. But that was his Scientology. That was a Scientologist involved in the case, right? Representing Reza pro bono, right? Mm -hmm. So he died. So you know, your attorney dies, you get some more time. There's another delay, and then what happens? And and what happens in the next uh, hearing before preliminary criminal trial is set? Um, Hanan Islam's attorney announces that she has uh, cancer, colon cancer, and that she needs the trial needs to be delayed because she needs treatment. Now, I want to be very careful here. Hanan Islam's attorney waived her HIPAA rights in court, and the ju judge Tynan was very careful about that. So the reason I'm saying it, I'm not invading her privacy. She yelled at me in the uh, preliminary criminal trial uh -huh. about her her, her health matter being private, but her attorney waived her HIPAA rights to privacy, okay? So I'm not talking out of school. Right. And the judge accepted, and she got delayed. The next thing that happens, uh, Hanan, and, and this is where uh, none of the defendants went to these hearings, and they should have, because you hear the attorneys talk to the prosecutor, and I'm listening, and the attorneys are saying, uh, uh, one of the defense attorneys is saying to the prosecutor, well, if Hanan dies, you know, she's the big kingpin so all you know every, every the whole case should be dismissed and the judge said we'll wait and see what happens right right N now get this pharaoh Hanan, they, they paint a picture in this court hearing like Hanan's on her deathbed and then i don't know maybe a month or two later risa posts a picture on instagram of him with his mother in los angeles attending a film that he's in called the art of black warfare uh -huh. and, and i and i see it and a lot of other people go well, wait a minute we thought not, uh, his mom was dying hold on wait a minute we have an, uh, uh well, well, well. Your, your phone is breaking up okay okay is this better yep okay okay so reza posted a picture of himself and his mother in los angeles and she looks good she looks healthy right right but she's supposed to be getting over cancer now this is not too smart if you're if you're trying to delay the preliminary criminal trial you don't post a picture of yourself with your mom when she's supposed to be you know on death's doorstep correct so that wasn't too smart on Reza's part and i guess somebody sent it to the court because the next the next hearing judge tynan transfers this thing up to the ninth floor of the criminal courts building for to judge pastor and then suddenly everything is on right and uh the you know the preliminary criminal trial uh is set to begin but what's so strange pharaoh is um once the trial begins hanan islam and reza islam start arguing a sovereign citizen defense and i'm sitting there in court and they're claiming and i'm watching this and you know we we read about sovereign citizen movement right 
And but to actually see in real life people asserting sovereign citizen argument in front of a judge in a criminal felony criminal matter, it's bizarre. I, they're saying the court doesn't have jurisdiction over them, that they are not the people, that they're the natural person, they're not the people named in the capital letters in the indictment. And I'm thinking these people stand accused of defrauding the people of the state of California, $3.8 million, and yet they're trying to get away with it by saying they're natural persons and not the, you know, not the legal fiction, right. the corporate legal fiction. And I'm thinking this is not going to work. And yeah. the thing is, Farrell, that $3.8 million could have been spent on kids who really needed drug treatment. And that, and that's, and this it's is, a, and this is where my issue comes in. Because even like you stated, you know, his, his, you know, uh, you know, it, it, his silly ass, he, 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 he posted that picture with his mom, you know, for the little, uh, the little thing he was a part of the art of black warfare. But it's really like, how you talking about you? This is the art of black warfare. And the main people that you being a predator upon is other black people. And then it's like, you um, sat here and frauded the state of California out of $3.8 million, as you just stated, when him better than knowing than anybody, I mean, knowing better than anybody, know that it's, it's issues going on in our community where that actually, like you said, could have been utilized for people who need it. So that's what makes, you know, the situation so wicked. And, you know, before you continue on and, um, you know, answer, I mean, before you continue answering this question, before we go to the next one, I just want to say I did a lecture on you know the the moors and the sovereignty and all of that so like i said if you if you if y'all rock with me y'all know how i'm going if not if you're new to me uh all of my content is on my website because when you post certain things on youtube people flag it so all of my lectures are on youngthrow.net but i say that to say this you can't enter into a business contract or transaction in this country and be operating as a citizen and then when you're doing a legal activity and you get caught now, all of a sudden, you want to be a sovereign citizen. So my thing is, whether people believe in sovereignty or not, they wasn't saying that they were sovereigns when they were signing them fake-ass checks, when they was busting these insurance fraud moves. So you've been operating as a citizen for years, and then you get caught, and now you're a sovereign. So, you know, the, the, the issue with that, you know, for people who may can't think beyond the box, I mean, outside the box and around the corner, the issue with that is, you don't get to have it your way. This is not Burger King. You don't get to be a citizen and be scamming and be doing all of this bullshit. And then when you get caught, now you're a sovereign. I, now, 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 I could see if, you know, they was like living off the grid and they was like, you know, we don't want to be a part of it, you know, a part of the country. Then I would say, you know, whether I agree with your argument or not, I can say at least you haven't been trying to benefit, you know, from the from the government. So at least your argument is in synchronicity with your lifestyle. But your lifestyle can't be not only trying to benefit from the government, but you're trying to get over on the government. And then when they come and say, hey, we caught you trying to get over on us, now you're sitting here trying to say, y'all don't have no jurisdiction to say shit to me. Because, you know, if I was the government, I would punish you harshly for trying to play with my authority like that. That's just that's just anybody. So, um, you know, that's that's stupid to me. That's, a, that's one of the dumbest defenses, you know, I think that he could have created. Um, I don't know what he's thinking with that one, but you know, good luck. But um, you can continue on with your answer. Well, you know, and just to to, to back up what you were saying, Farrell, uh, you make excellent points because, yeah, when the state of California was mailing them the, the medical reimbursement checks in the amount, you know, totaling three point eight million, right? Uh, Hanan was certainly taking the money in her own name. She was the signatory in the bank accounts along with Zakia, right? And uh, yeah, so you can't have it both ways. You don't you don't get to take all the money and then suddenly you're nobody and you know so you make a great point there. Yeah. Now Hanan Hanan so aggravated the judge and, and and Judge Pastor Judge Pastor bent over backwards to say, Ma'am, ma'am, no. It, it, all he was asking her, what is your name and are you the named defendant? And she refused to answer and she got very angry and quarrelsome with the judge. So he ordered her arrested. Right. And she was, uh, you know, the, the, the bailiff cleared the courtroom. 
she was arrested for contempt of court. Reza was arrested for contempt of court. Your voice is going they out again. Five days in, yeah. They were going to days in jail and find one thousand dollars. Right. So court reconvenes, and uh, you know Reza, Reza, and Hanan come back in the uh, courtroom in handcuffs, and I'm and I'm watching this. You see, you know, he's in handcuffs, and uh, Hanan is still defiant, so so she leaves. Well, long story short, that court day ends and the, the, the state's presenting its evidence. The next hearing, they show back up and uh, Reeves is let out and he's in he's in jail clothes, the blue L.A. County jail clothes. Right. So it's blue out here. It's not orange. And, and Hanan's in jail clothes. They're let out, let out in handcuffs by the deputies, handcuffed to a chair. Court begins and more evidence is presented. Now, by this time, they've, they've, they've dropped, you know, their sovereign citizen defense because the judge says to Hanan, if you want to stay here for your hearing, as you have a right to do, you need to state your name and you need to say that you are the named defendant. Right. And Hanan did that. Hanan, Hanan did that. She said, yes, my name's Hanan Islam and I am the named defendant. And um, if people want a narrative of everything I've done, you, you, you go to my recent blog post on people of the state of California versus um, Riza Islam. And I have links to Tony Ortega's blog. Tony Ortega is a, a very good friend of mine, and he's the premier blogger on the Church of Scientology in the world. So I, I did all my live reporting from the courthouse, and I called Tony, and he posted along with other comments. And... Um, so in the end, the sovereign citizen defense collapsed, and the last day of the preliminary criminal trial, the state put on a, a senior supervising special agent from the Franchise Tax Board to talk about Hanan Islam's uh, failing to file income taxes. Uh -huh. So the judge did a couple things. The judge ruled that the state had met its burden, the people had met its burden, for the case to be bound over for trial on all counts. Right. So the arraignment date is October 22nd. Now, what the judge also did, all, all the defendants have been free on their own recognizance since they'd been charged in 2015. But things had changed. The, the judge cited the extraordinary changes in circumstance. So he, he ordered Hanan Islam held on $250,000 bail and he ordered Riza Islam held on $100,000 bail, and they were let out of the courtroom. They're in jail. Now, today I checked the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department inmate locator, and it looks like Riza has something from his past pop up because there's an, an additional $31,000 added to his bail. So his bail is now at $131,000, and it seems to refer to a past warrant. So when they brought him in the system, they found something from the past. And I'm trying to get information on that. So this $3.8 million that should have been spent on, on people who really needed help, young people who really needed help, was, was stolen. Right. Was, you know, that's the allegation. And they're going to go to trial. Whether they cut a deal, I don't know. Um, so that's, that's how it stands. And, I, and I, like I said, I was there in court the whole time. All the documents are posted on my website. You can see the court dates, the charging documents. So that's all the fact based, and that's the bottom line of what happened. Yep. And um, once again, I just did it. I'm going to do it again really quick before I even ask the next question. I put the link to his website in the comments. Once this live stream concludes, um, I'm going to pin it in the comments, you know, so if you're watching this and you're actually not watching it while we're doing it live now, just scroll down to them comments and uh, the link to the Scientology Money Project will be posted. Um, let me get on to the next question because I got about 30 more minutes here and I want to really get through this. So the next question, sure. yeah, the next question uh, that I want to propose is. How did Scientology and the Nation of Islam, I mean, excuse me, yeah, how did Scientology and the Nation of Islam become involved? Well, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, it was through Alfredi Johnson and Tony Muhammad. Right. And that led to, to, to Mr. Farrakhan getting involved and then him ordering the nation. But, but what you have to understand 
is this was an order from Mr. Farrakhan himself that to the entire nation that you will get involved. Correct. And, and, and then when issues correct. when when issues about L. Ron Hubbard being a racist were raised, Mr. Farrakhan addressed those. If you remember the YouTube video, yeah, I, I, where he, um, he defended that. Yeah, I I critiqued him on that. Yeah, and and so it's sort of a you get wisdom from whatever source it comes from, right? And more and more, the Nation of Islam is becoming Scientology. It, it really is because. Yeah, let me show you before, you're in science, before you yeah. continue. You jog my memory, and I want to show a picture really quickly on the screen. Please. Yeah, on the screen, and I've and like I said, if you if you follow me, you know I've touched on this guy too, Tony Muhammad. Uh, this is Tony Muhammad, an image of Tony Muhammad uh, in Ireland. You know, promoting Scientology. So you know, before you even continue that, you know, in, in a more detailed manner, could you let us know what Tony Muhammad is doing in Ireland? And if or how is Tony Muhammad or any other members financially benefiting from their interaction with Scientology? Well, that's a great question. The Church of Scientology is unusual in that it pays people commissions. It has it appoints people that are called field staff members. They're actually salespeople. So, for example. Uh, they get ten percent. So if, if your if phone, your phone, your phone is uh, your phone signal uh, going out again. It went out at ten percent. Okay, hey there. Okay, okay. The Church of Scientology pays commissions to its salespeople, and these salespeople are called field staff members. And so, if Tony Muhammad sold somebody services, Scientology services for fifty thousand dollars, he would pocket five thousand in commission. Okay. And the, and, and the white man he's with is Jim Mathers, who's been in the mix with the Nation of Islam since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they they travel together. So the financial benefits is that, is that in order for the Nation of Islam to do Scientology, Scientology is a franchise system. That's right. It had, all of L. Ron Hubbard's works are copyrighted by the Religious Technology Center. And that's where David Miscavige, the best friend of Tom Cruise, he runs the Religious Technology Center, RTC. That's a part of Scientology a lot of your listeners may not know about, but it owns all the copyrights. Okay. And it, it in turn licenses the Church of Scientology International, which in turn licenses the local churches, and it would license uh, the Nation of Islam. But you gotta, you got to pay royalties. So the Nation of Islam, everything that it buys or does, it has to pay the Church of Scientology 10%. Usually, typically, it could be more. It could be less. I don't know what kind of deal they negotiated. That's all private, right? But it's paying. The Nation of Islam is paying. And then the salespeople in the Nation of Islam or the field staff members are getting 10% of whatever they get out of Nation of Islam members. So, now, the Nation of Islam hasn't disclosed. They don't have any financial transparency. They haven't told the members how the financial relationship works. But there are financial relationships because somebody had to pay for Tony Muhammad to go to Ireland in his green nation of Islam suit. And why is he in Ireland promoting Scientology? I thought he was the Western Regional Minister for the Nation of Islam here in the U.S. I totally agree. So this picture, this picture is astonishing because it does show the central thrust of the key figures in Scientology and, and Tony Muhammad is certainly a leading a leading figure. He's in Ireland promoting Scientology. That book they're holding, is it the Quran? No. It's a special copy of Dianetics printed in green. Those are usually sold for anywhere from one to five thousand dollars as commemorative editions. Uh -huh. He sells that five thousand for that book for five thousand, Tony's gonna pocket five hundred dollars. I mean, this is how it works, right? So he'll he'll get he'll get paid money to go over there and speak, lend his name and credibility and prestige, and Scientologists think, oh, the Nation of Islam is embracing Scientology, so it must be good. And David Miscavige has seen that he's using black people to promote the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard, right? Uh, that's why on Facebook you see one group called Scientology and the Invasion of the Black Community. Uh huh. And so they work together. The whole thing is to bring 
black people into Scientology, ultimately. <clears throat> and if they have to do it through the Nation of Islam, they'll do it through the Nation of Islam. If they have to do it through some other groups, they'll do it through other groups. Scientology makes the claim that you can be a Christian and a Scientologist. You can be a Jew and a Scientologist. You can be Nation of Islam and a Scientologist. They want to be all things to all people. <clears throat> but ultimately, you have to be a Scientologist. Which is, tr which is true in fact. For sure, definitely a fact. Oh, it's absolutely. When the uh, Church of Scientology applied to the IRS for its tax exemption, which it received in 1993... Mm -hmm. That's an entirely different matter. Oh, that's a, a whole. That's another show, Farrell. Right. It said that Scientologists are expected to abandon their religion and look only to Scientology and the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard for the answers to life. That's and right. I have that on my blog, and I'll, I'll send you the link to put in your show notes. Yep. So you're expected to look at whatever you are. If you're Jewish, you're allowed to celebrate Passover you know, cultural things within your faith tradition. Yes. But you better damn well be reading and following L. Ron Hubbard and the teachings of the Church of Scientology and David and obeying whatever David Miscavige says. That's right. So that's how it, that's how it works in reality. And they can lie about it all they want, but you follow L. Ron Hubbard. He is God in Scientology. That's right. Um let me get to my next question. I think this is going to be, you know, probably one of the most critical questions I asked on this interview. Um, what other Scientology crit uh, criminal matters are going on currently? Well, this is interesting. There's a long history of Scientology and financial crime. Excuse me. Going back into the 1990s. Well, well first of all, let's go back even earlier. L. Ron Hubbard engaged in money laundering and income tax evasion. That was established. The Church of Scientology lost its IRS uh, income tax <clears throat> exemption in 1967. And because L. Ron Hubbard was spending money on himself and they took away income tax exemption, but L. Ron Hubbard created a bunch of phony <clears throat> corporations. He had secret bank accounts in Liechtenstein, Switzerland, other places. Uh -huh. So L. Ron Hubbard looked upon the Church of Scientology is a, a piggy bank that he could just plunder at will. You know, and he, he there's, the, if, if people research online, they can see that Hubbard, when he was up in hiding at his ranch in Creston, California, up by uh, San Luis Obispo, this is the ranch where he died. In the years before his death, they were routinely bringing him suitcases with one million dollars in cash. Mm -hmm. So he had money stashed all over the place, right? Now, moving forward in the modern era in the 1990s, there was a Scientologist. Your voice, your voice is, uh, is crackling again. Okay. Moving forward into the 1990s, uh -huh. there was a Scientologist named Reed Slatkin. People, your reader should Google this Reed, R E E D, Slatkin, which is S L A T K I N. Excuse me. Reed Slatkin conducted a Ponzi scheme for about $600 million. And uh, he was convicted. Um, so that was, at that time, one of the largest Ponzi schemes in U.S. history. And the church got a lot of the money because Reed donated a lot of money to the church. Uh, the feds had to try to claw back the money, and the church fought to keep, <laughs> they fought not to give back the criminal proceeds, right? That's right. <laughs> now, in, in, in the, so there's always been, like, the church has sold, uh, Scientologists, rather, have sold stupid things like blue laundry balls. Mm -hmm. They claim that if you have this blue blue laundry ball, you could eliminate detergent. And the, uh, up in Oregon, the attorney general found it was filled with water, but they were selling like it was magic deionized water or something, you know? Right. So there's always these scammy, multi-level marketing schemes. In recent times, uh, two Scientology brothers were chiropractors in both OT8s, which is the top of the bridge, the Spina brothers uh, out of the East Coast were arrested in an $80 million Medicare fraud. Wow. $80 million they stole by false billings, and they were working, you know, with a doctor and that whole typical chiropractor scam. There's also a, a, a company called GPB Capital that's being investigated, and it's owned by a Scientologist named David Gentile. GPB Capital is a private equity fund out of New York. 
it raised $1.8 billion, billion with a B. And this is, a, you know, a Scientology-owned company, <clears throat> and uh, it's being, it was raided by the FBI earlier this year. And it's involved in, in waste management in New York City. And you know what waste management in New York City <laughs> implies, right? Right. <laughs> so they're being investigated by the Securities Exchange Commission, Securities Exchange Commission and um, securities regulators in New York, in the state of New York, state of New Jersey, Massachusetts. So, and, I, and, and this is all on my blog. You can find these these schemes. So, one of the things, Pharaoh, is Scientology costs a lot of money. If you want to go do Scientology from the beginning all the way up to OTA, you're going to spend at least three hundred sixty thousand dollars. That's right. And because Scientology is so status obsessed, you're going to be donate for these glorified bowling trophies to what's called the International Association of Scientologists. Mm -hmm. And people can go online and see these um, the whales have donated a million dollars, and they've got this glorified bowling trophy to buy status. Because Scientology is so obsessed with status and money, the burden is on the Scientologists to get money. And they want to live the high life, right? But they want to do it with other people's money. And so that's why they've always, there's, there's always been these um, shady financial things going on around the church with Scientologists. And the thing that Reza Islam got caught up in was just outright criminal fraud. Right. That's what's alleged. And that's why he's going on trial. And that's why he's locked up on $131,000 bail. And, and my question to you, sir. Yes, sir. Did Reza ever share this with his community when he was doing all his social media? No. Um, for me to fully answer that question, none of them have ever shared this. I'm the first and only person who've ever researched this and brought this out. Uh, when I brought it to the community, of course, you know, I had uh, people saying like, oh, you know, you... You want to tear another black man down and rah, 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 and all of that type of, you know, reverse psychology, deflective shit. But outside of that, he has never brought this out. When I brought it out, he ignored it. Uh, a lot of people send me screenshots of them questioning him about it on Instagram. He blocked everybody. Uh, still to this day, never acknowledged it. You know, I believe if you're going to court and you're potentially about to be away from your fan base, you would want to inform them of that instead of just going to jail and they having to surprise, you know, be surprised that you're not going to be on social media no more for those who don't know. So he purposely tried to keep this a secret. The entire nation of Islam purposely tried to keep this a secret. I make more than enough noise for them to know that I brought this up because, you know, I, I do stuff like I tag people uh, on Instagram when I'm talking about them. I tag them. I tell everybody to tag them. I ask people, do they want to go live with me? They can answer any questions that I have. So I don't, I don't just make accusations and not give people a chance to respond to the accusation. I wouldn't give a fuck if it was David. If David Miscavige asked want to go live, we can go live and he can answer some questions. So that's how I give it up. So, you know, he purposely refused to bring this information to the public. Um, and, you know, here we are. Well, Farrell, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Um, here's what puzzles me. But first, let me say something you mentioned earlier. Mm hmm. When, when you mentioned about unity, you made an excellent point. During this preliminary criminal trial, nobody from the Nation of Islam was there. Nobody from the Church of Scientology was there to, to lend moral support. Nobody from Reza's fan base was there. Only his aunt was there and, um, you know, one of his sisters. But there was nobody there. I, I was there as a reporter. And as we saw, ABC News, Channel 7 Eyewitness News in Los Angeles came there and did a story on it. Right. And and the fact that, that, that Reza, who considers himself a social media superstar, a social media influencer. Your phone going out again. There. Okay, well, Phil, why? If, if Reza Islam, who, who portrays himself as such an important social media influencer, why didn't the nation show up for him? I don't understand that. Wouldn't they show up to support one of their own? Exactly. And that's and that's that's just you know what I'm saying? And I hate to bring a lower level case into into 
such an important issue, but you don't have to bring it up because it's high profile and everybody could re re relate. If you look at what's going on with Takashi Six Nine, you know, even though we're not encouraging or promoting criminality, all of the bloods are coming to court for the bloods. So whether we agree with that type of shit or not, you know what I'm saying? They're coming. So it's like, if, it, why would you not come and support somebody you know that you claim to support on other platforms when it's actually a real life situation? So for the Nation of Islam or the Church of Scientology to not be present at this man court date. It shows a lot of things. For me, number one, it shows they don't give a damn about you. Uh, for two, mm. it, it shows, you know, what we call leaving you out there to dry. You know what I'm saying? We're going to leave you high and dry out here to dry. So, you know, he basically uh, tried to finesse our community to which he is from. And he's getting finessed. And he's getting left out to dry, as he should. And so, you know, that's... uh. Mm. That's crippling and that's that's intricate. You know what I'm saying? Cause like somebody just put in the chat, uh, Ben X must have seen this live and now he posted something talking about free risen. But you know, Ben X, I know your bitch ass is watching with your bitch ass. You should have took your bitch ass to court and supported your homeboy. Don't be on Instagram talking about free your guy. Why don't you go to court as Jeffrey just stated and morally support your guy? So y'all are corny as fuck. Because I know y'all watching with y'all goofy asses. Y'all all corny. From Farrakhan all the way down to your lame live at home with your mom ass. Y'all all corny as hell. Y'all thought y'all was slick. And now it's you falling on your face. So, you know, I want to say this before I pass the mic back. The Nation of Islam has such dirty karma with the black community. Okay? And I'm just speaking in the public now. Y'all have bullied black people. Okay? Y'all have abuse black people. Y'all have oppressed black people. Y'all have made black people feel guilty for being successful outside this community. Y'all have single-handedly withheld progression in this fucking community for 60 years or better out of the 100 years you've been here. Y'all have played a role in killing leaders that have not been wicked in their spirit, but have had the interest of black people on the forefront, y'all have played a role in killing these leaders to protect pedophiles such as Elijah Muhammad. Y'all karma is so garbage that it has come back to bite you in your trash ass. And I'm here to take your bitch ass out to the disposal. So I have no sympathy for nothing that happens to y'all. I don't care. I don't care if they give Rizza ass a quadrillion years. He gonna have enough time to think about how much I don't give a fuck. So... You know, it this it's it's your time. And um, you know, I wanted to say that before I pass the mic back. Yep, Karen, I hear you. Yep. And um yep. No, go ahead, Jeffrey, you got it. Go ahead. Well, Carol, you, you this is exactly for a long time I've used the language of the of the karmic vortex mm -hmm. is systematically dismantling the Church of Scientology in its present form. I was there on the streets with Anonymous when the protests were held in 2008. Right. And, you know, I, here's, what, here's what activists like us do. We show up. So when there's, I showed up on the street at the protests, even as LAPD, was, the church was trying to say Anonymous was a, a terrorist group, and it wasn't. It was, a, it was a group of committed young people out to expose evil. That's right. And I was there on the streets, and I was there in court when Reza was arrested along with his mother, Hanan, and I'll be there at the arraignment. And I'm going to document everything the Church of Scientology does because, as you say, we need receipts, so we have the evidence. And, and going forward, I'm going to continue to work to expose the Church of Scientology uh, along with my wife, Karen, yeah. along yeah. with Leah Remini. Mike Render and so many other good people, and I appreciate you, your your help and your insights into what's happening with Reza Islam. Yeah, that's and, not uh, a problem. And I want to, you know, extend my appreciation out to you, you know, Leia, your wife, and everybody on your side that's doing their due diligence. And um, you know, I want to let say it publicly. You know, it, it in this situation or if another situation arises. If y'all, you know, if we, if y'all need me to help, if y'all need, we need to collab, uh, excuse me, 
uh, collaborate on some research or whatever, you y'all don't gotta hesitate at all to reach out. Cause I'm not with the bullshit and I'm not with the finesse game. And um, what you call it? You know, I ain't gonna say it publicly because mm -hmm. you know they might flag the video or something. But privately, you know, you know we can speak mm -hmm. on the next court date. And you know, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, know who you going up there with to do your your research and get and you know jot your notes. But definitely, I know some people in LA who I could have present to visually be present and you know document what's going on, so that way my community is not continuously finessed or lied to, and we can be clear on not only the charges but the happenings at these court proceedings. But um. Yeah, unless you got anything else, you know, you want to add or, you know, that you might have forgot to say, you know, you can say it now or if not, we can get ready to close caption this and this can post up for the people to hear it and, you know, do what they do. And uh, we can, you know, I'll, I'll politic with you behind the scenes and we can create the next step, you know, that that needs to be taken from this situation. So that way we can try to remedy damn near 20 years of bullshit between the Church of Scientology and the NOI so that we can stop stagnation in the areas where they created it. Uh, sir, I, don't, I, I think we've covered everything. I just want to end on one note. Uh, because I do read Church of Scientology websites, I do, I've read L. Ron Hubbard's works. I study the other side, the opposition. Uh, I ordered uh, Reza Islam's book, Message to Millennials, mm -hmm. and I haven't received it yet. I, I figure him... Uh, being in jail may have interfered with his ability to ship, but um, I think it's so important for people who want to be an eyewitness to this to go to court and watch the arraignment. That's right. Because that way, that way, when you're an eyewitness and there's a court record and you're there and you've seen it, like I have been, and and I and I think it's fair to say, Pharaoh, that I'm probably the only person to see the nation of Islam, Scientology and the sovereign citizen movement come together in a courtroom. I don't think that's ever happened. It, it, it hasn't happened. That's some, it, when you first told me that my brain was like, what? Like they really trying it right now. They're really trying it. But you know, if they bold enough to do the thing, the nation of Islam has done so much stuff. Like, for example, B Biggie Smalls' bodyguard accused them of being the ones that killed Biggie Smalls. Uh, there's another, I don't know if you're familiar with a group, uh, from, you know, that was created in the 90s titled The Nation of Gods of Earth. You know, it, that was started by somebody named Clarence X-13. They say the Nation of Islam killed him. We know they was involved in Malcolm X's death. We know, you know, it, it's plenty of people out here, just random people that I've talked to and that I've seen you know, been beat up and pressure getting put on them because if they don't sell the, the damn final call newspapers, they got to pay for them out of pocket. So the, the Nation of Islam has been bold enough to try to be a fake mafia for all of these years. So as crazy as that, as crazy as them trying to try that sovereignty shit, um, whatchamacallit, it doesn't surprise me because they bold enough to do some crazy things that we've seen over the years. Well, well, that's well said, Farrell. With that, I, I'm, I've had my say, and I really appreciate you having me on your show. I really, I really want to thank you for it. That's not a problem. I, I appreciate you reaching out. I thank you for reaching out um, because, to me, that lets me know that um, my character and my mentality is transitioning myself to the position that I want to be in, which is of aid and assistance to anybody that's positive within a spirit. I don't want to be confined to, uh, you know, wickedness or uphold wickedness. So, you know, by, by us even, uh, collaborating right now, uh, on this topic, even though it's much needed, this is a lot of confirmation for me personally that, um, I'm doing what I should be doing as the individual that I am. And like I stated before, before we end, if you, uh, your wife, uh, Leia, anybody over there, you know, need any assistance from me, uh, whatchamacallit, you know, I, I'm glad to offer it. I've done, I've, I've spoke on them so many times. I'm not gonna say I'm tired of it, but I'm just like, you know, I don't even feel like going into it. But like I said, I got PowerPoints, damn near a hundred slides. You know, I may have something in there you haven't seen. I may have something in there you have seen, but you know, we can, I'll let you look at it. And you know, if it's something you could take and go, you know, go. Cause I've done, you know, my research from my perspective, but you know, I, I definitely, um, 
you know, to the community out there, the black community, the white community, whatever. Uh, I definitely look forward, you know, to those who wish for this world to become a better place. I definitely look forward to us making that, making it that way. Because I'm not with that talking. I'm not with that um complaining about things and not offering solutions. So as this continues to unfold, we will. I will be on it from the perspective of my community. Jeffrey will be on it from the perspective of his community. And I'm, I'm going to speak with Jeffrey behind the scenes and see if we can actually put something together in L.A. where we bring this shit to the public, you know, because a lot of y'all don't actually understand the full extent and depth of how wicked this shit is. So I'm going to see if we can put something together to where, you know, we create an event and just lay all this shit on the table. So that way, you know, these people can't keep trying to hide behind the smoke screen that they've been trying to hide behind. But uh, Jeffrey, I definitely appreciate you coming onto the platform. Much love to everybody in my chat. Uh, as I stated before, this video is about to post now. I'm going to pin in the comments uh, the link to the Scientology Money Project as well as the first two exposed videos that I did on Rizza Islam, as I stated as promised. And uh, with that being said, family, y'all enjoy y'all afternoon. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you once again for coming on. I love y'all. Peace.